ओके सो हेलो टू ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स सो आई एम बैक अगेन आफ्टर अ लॉन्ग टाइम विद द मोस्ट डिमांडेड वीडियो इन द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ प्लान पैथोलॉजी बिफोर आई जस्ट बिगिन द लेक्चर आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू थैंक ईच एंड एवरी स्टूडेंट ईच एंड एवरी पर्सन हु हैज़ बीन वॉचिंग द वीडियोज़ इन माई चैनल थैंक यू ऑल ऑफ यू ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स who have been giving continuously their feedback in uh, various videos in the channel in fact uh, this series the plant pathology has received maximum uh, comments and positive feedbacks from students around the globe uh, i must admit that um, my efforts uh, to teach has been really fruitful because uh there there are students uh from all over uh india and also students uh from uh, f- uh other countries for example like pakistan and italy so i am um very much grateful and very much uh, happy that uh my efforts to teach has been uh, helpful to students around the globe so i thank you all of you your feedbacks are um, like very valuable and i want that um, please keep giving your feedback like this because this motivates me a lot to do what i am doing right now and um, i know it has been a long gap but um, i am now back on track and i'll assure that uh, i'll complete this lecture series and like this many more videos in future so thank you to all the lovely students and all the well wishers for being a part of funful life and uh, with this i start with the um continuation of the lecture series in plant pathology uh so um so um in the series of plant pathology in the lecture series we have been um i had just explained uh, some parts of these methods that are used that are employed to um to um eradicate or to uh, reduce the inoculum or pathogen from the field right so in that um, we have already um, learnt about regulatory methods i had explained the various regulatory methods that falls under excluding the pathogen from the host right and i have also explained about cultural methods in previous videos where um, uh these cultural methods they deal with eradication or reduction of inoculum so cultural methods up to cultural methods we uh, have learned everything and now we are going to learn um, ahead with physical methods right so we are already done with regulatory and cultural methods now under the title of eradication and reduction of inoculum i'll be teaching today the physical methods and then later on we will continue with biological methods and chemical methods right so today in this lecture i'll be explaining you about physical methods of plant disease management or control methods whatever we say to um, reduce or eradicate the pathogen from the field so physical methods are um, basically the methods where physical agents are used right so these are various types of physical agents like temperature like water like wavelength the various physical agents are used to eradicate the inoculum from the plants so i suppose that you all know now what is inoculum inoculum is the um amount of pathogen maybe um some spores or um reproductive part of the pathogen which then spreads in the plant so any kind of physical agents 
that we use to eradicate the inoculum uh, from the plant have been included in physical methods. Now see what we need to understand is that uh, based on the physi physiological tolerance of disease agents uh, to various adverse conditions these uh, treatments vary. So as I said physical methods are various physical agents like high temperature like wavelength and all. So um, every disease agent that is every pathogen has some sort of um, tolerance level to um, various kind of physical agents. Right. So, we will understand this point in uh, later slides. So, I am not going to um, explain you right now in deep, but uh, for now you can understand that based on the tolerance of the pathogen, these, these methods vary uh, for different pathogens and the treatment also varies. Right. So, physical methods um, can be basically divided into heat treatment elimination of certain light wavelengths, drying of stored produce, refrigeration and radiation, right. So, I will be explaining each of these in a bit more detail. So, we will first of all start with the understanding of heat treatment. So, um, heat treatment as the name suggests is uh, the use of heat to eradicate or reduce the pathogen inoculum right so heat treatment can hence be divided into um, three methods these are soil sterilization hot water treatment and hot air treatment right so um, in all of these uh, three methods uh, we will understand uh, in a bit more detail uh, but the point to understand it is that in all of these methods we are raising the temperature of um, the water, the air and the soil so that the pathogen present uh, uh, in, in that hot environment will get killed. Right? So, we first of all start with the understanding of soil sterilization. So, as the name suggests soil steriliz uh, sterilization means sterilization of the soil right so the soil in which we are going to uh, grow our own plants in the field that soil has to be pathogen free right so to make that soil pathogen free it has to be sterilized by certain means so that the pathogen gets removed from that soil because soil is the uh, basic medium in which the plant will grow. So, if the medium is infected, the plant will be infected and hence it is very important to sterilize the soil. So, um, when can we say that a soil is completely sterilized, right? So, it is considered to be completed only when the coldest part of the soil has remained hot for at least 30 minutes or above at 82 degrees Celsius. So, in the soil, when the coldest part of the soil, right, when the coldest part of the soil remains hot for at least 30 minutes. So, we have given heat treatment for at least 30 minutes to even the coldest part of the soil. This, uh, this means that uh, the soil has been sterilized completely, which means now the soil will be free of pathogen, right. So, um, the point to understand is that uh, a temperature should be reached at which all the plant pathogen in the soil gets killed. So, usually at a temperature of around 82 degree Celsius or a little more above it, most of the plant pathogen gets killed and hence when the coldest part of the soil uh, remains hot for at least 30 minutes at or above 82 degrees Celsius all the plant pathogen will get killed and this will mean that the soil sterilization process is completed. 
so um, this kind of soil sterilization can be done in greenhouses glass houses right in fact it it is being done in various types of greenhouse glass house seed beds right the nursery beds in which uh, seeds are grown and seedlings come up and then those seedlings are transplanted from the nursery bed so seed beds are uh, the soil in the seed beds are also sterilized by these method and um, any kind of horticultural soil that is uh, any kind of soil which is being used for the uh, production of horticultural ornamental plants can be sterilized by this soil sterilization method now um, this soil sterilization can be uh, basically of two types that is soil solarization and uh, second is um, increasing the temperature by the help of steam or hot water right so we will understand each of this in a bit more detail so let us first of all understand that what is soil solarization so as you can see in the picture this is the process of soil solarization where we are utilizing the energy of the sun that is we are utilizing the solar energy to increase the temperature of the soil so what is being done in this process what we have to do that a polythene film is to be placed over moist soil right so for example this is a field in this field um, we can create uh, small uh, ridges like this and uh, over these ridges polythene film uh, can be spread over so um, what will happen is that uh, this polythene will trap the heat of the sun uh, to its maximum maximum extent right so this is best when this is done during the hot summer days because summer days are the days where the temperature reaches uh, to a maximum of say 50 uh, 45 50 degree celsius which means that more the heat uh, more harsh the sun will be more the heat will be trapped in the soil right so um, this polythene film will trap all the solar energy inside and as the soil will be kept moist so the soil inside will be kept moist so that will trap more and more heat energy and like this with the help of solar energy whatever pathogens that are present inside the soil will get killed completely by the solar energy itself so this is the use of solar energy where polythene film are placed over the moist soil right so this helps in trapping the solar heat in the soil and this then kills the pathogen now coming to the next method that is which is done by steam or hot water so what is being done in this process is that steam is piped into and allowed to diffuse through the soil so in this process we are utilizing steam right so what is being done uh, like as you can see in the picture uh, such kind of uh, machinery is used where um, steam is piped inside this uh, kind of pipe so in this pipe there is steam present and there are very small small pores over the over the pipe so this steam uh, it comes out and uh, this helps in making the soil um, temperature higher right so in many cases um, this uh, this this kind of pipe is being buried inside the soil so what will happen that inside the soil the steam will spread and because of that steam the plant uh, the soil pathogens will get destroyed because because they will not be able to tolerate the heat that the steam is producing so this setup uh, can also be buried inside the soil and the steam will diffuse in the soil so um, now by these methods um, most of the nematodes 
these are nematodes are worms right that are present in a very high amount in the soil right so these nematodes can get killed at 50 degree celsius so if the temperature reaches to a 50 degree celsius this means that nematodes will get killed then when the temperature reaches 60 to 70 degree celsius to so most of the pathogenic fungi right whatever fungal species are there bacterial species are there various kinds of worms they get killed at 60 to 72 degree celsius and um, at 82 degree celsius most of the weeds right right most of the weeds and pathogenic bacteria or viruses they get killed so um, but there are certain weed seeds and certain viruses which are heat tolerant right that means they can survive higher temperature so such heat tolerant weed seeds and tmv like viruses that is tobacco mosaic like viruses are killed at a temperature between 95 and 100 degree celsius so this means that as they are more heat tolerant they require higher uh, temperature to uh, get killed right so when the temperature reaches 95 to 100 degree celsius only and only then these heat tolerant weed seeds and tmv like viruses they get killed right so uh, as you can see um, these are pathogens nematodes there are many pathogenic nematodes there are many pathogenic fungi bacteria worms right and viruses so all of these have different tolerance level to different temperature right so as you can see nematodes the temperature that nematodes need is not enough for pathogenic fungi and bacteria what these pathogenic fungi and bacteria need is is not enough for many types of viruses right so uh, every pathogen have their own tolerance level and based on that tolerance level um, this treatment is being given so this was the point that i had mentioned in the previous slide when i i had just started about um, i had just started explaining about physical methods so there i had said that there was a statement right where it uh, that statement was saying that um, uh, every um, disease agent have their own tolerance so this is what uh, that point was telling that every pathogen have their own tolerance to some kind of all kind of physical agents and based on that treatment is to be given to get the fruitful results right so this is about soil sterilization now we come to the next type of heat treatment that is hot water treatment so this treatment is basically uh, uh, done for the sterilization of uh, storage organs like seeds bulbs right like tubers and nursery stock right so various type of storage organs are present these storage organs can be sterilized by hot water treatment so what does this hot water treatment do uh, this hot water treatment helps in removal of internal infection if there is any internal infection present in the storage organ for example this that you see is infected wheat seed right so this is internal infection as uh, already the seeds has been infected from inside by the pathogen the mycelium has grown right so um, this helps in removal of internal infection or this also helps from external surface wounds so if in if in the storage organ there are some kind of external wounds uh, this may be may happen during handling of the product or something for example um, during handling the potato or the bulb it just got a kind of cut that is an external wound so that external surface wound itself is very dangerous because that is the path from where the pathogen can enter in the plant right so it's very important that even the external surface wounds are completely removed 
so this hot water treatment helps in removal of both internal infection and also from external surface wounds so um this is to be noted that once this hot water treatment was the only method for loose mud of wheat now uh, i suppose you must be knowing that loose mud of wheat is caused by a fungal pathogen called ustilago triticae right so ustilago triticae um, causes loose mud of wheat where the ear of the wheat it gets completely infected and become uh, black that black mass is the mass of spores of ustilago right those are the smut spores of ustilago right so um, once upon a time this was the only method for loose smut of wheat right because what used to happen that the fungus uh, used to uh, overwinter inside the seed now um, in i suppose in cultural method i had explained what is overwintering and what is over summering right so in very brief i am just telling right now that overwintering means when certain pathogen survives unfavorable condition so ustilago triticae which is the pathogen of um, causal organism of loose mud of wheat uh, overwinters which means winter is an unfavorable condition for the pathogen and hence the uh, the fungus they overwinter inside the seed so which means that inside the seed they uh, just remain in a position of rest and then they will start growing when the favorable condition will come that is when summer will come right so um, inside the seed of uh, wheat the fungus used to overwinter and hence chemicals uh, were not useful to eradicate the overwintering fungus because chemicals can only help when um, when there is a pathogen present on the surface because chemicals you spray only from outside right so the chemicals were not um, helpful uh, in such cases so um, therefore loose mud of wheat uh, was always um, treated with hot water treatment because hot water treatment increases the temperature even from in, inside the seeds also the temperature increases and therefore the pathogen they get killed right so the advantage of this treatment is that that all the dormant plant organs that is storage organs can withstand higher temperatures than those of their respective pathogens so these pathogens they cannot withstand higher temperature but the dormant plant organs can withstand higher temperature so uh, there will be no harm to the storage organs to the dormant organs but higher temperature will certainly harm the pathogens and in this way um, the pathogen will be removed so this is an advantage of such kind of treatment in storage organs so um, now the temperature of the hot water so what is the temperature of the hot water that we use is it 40 degree celsius is it 50 degree celsius or is it more and the duration of the treatment right? like um, for what time we are giving the treatment are we giving it for half an hour are we giving it for 10 minutes or 30 minutes this vary with the pathogen again the same point that i had explained here because every pathogen have their own tolerance and uh, therefore depending on the tolerance the temperature of the hot water and the duration of the treatment varies so for loose mud for example the seeds are kept in hot water at 52 degree celsius for only 10 to 11 minutes whereas for uh, nematode it is um, for nematodes like dt lankus dispaci it is 43 degree celsius for 3 hours right so this means that the nematodes they require um, 
higher uh, they require uh, less lower temperature than uh, loose mud but they require a higher time right so this is 43 degree celsius for 3 hours whereas this is 52 degree celsius but for 10 to 11 minutes so depending upon the pathogen they require different kinds of treatment so coming to the uh, next type of treatment which is hot air treatment so as the name suggests this is um, um, making the air hot to remove the pathogen so again this is a treatment of certain storage organs with warm air so uh, we are supplying warm air in the environment in which the storage organs is present so that warm air will kill the pathogens and this process is also called as curing this curing process is being extensively used in uh, many kind of products for post harvest management right because warm air will not allow moisture to build up and this moisture um, this uh, moisture if uh, is present in the environment will ultimately lead to development of disease because most of the diseases they require moist environment to grow right so curing is a process where we supply um, warm air to whatever the produce is right so um, this helps in removing excess moisture whatever extra moisture is present over the surfaces of the um, plant parts that will be removed and this also helps in hastening the healing of wound so if there is any wound present on the um, plant part on the storage organ then that wound will also get healed because of the warm air because wound healing is also important if wound remains fresh then again pathogen can enter so for example sweet potatoes when kept at 28 to 32 uh, degree celsius for two weeks this heals the wounds whatever wound is present that gets healed and this prevent infection by rhizopus right rhizopus can cause infection it is a fungal disease so any kind of infection by rhizopus will be prevented and infection by soft rot bacteria will also be prevented again hot air treatment of ears of corn that is maize and tobacco leaves this will lead to a removal of moisture and bacteria from the surfaces of these uh, plants and uh, likewise barley seeds at 72 degree celsius for 7 to 10 days they eliminate uh, this will lead to elimination of xanthomonas compactus which is a uh, bacteria that causes leaf streak and black jab right so in this way all these are the three heat treatments that are being given to various uh, plant organs in different forms right so this is heat treatment to the soil this is a water um, hot water treatment where the water uh, is heated and uh, the storage organ are treated in the water and this is hot air treatment where air um, is uh, made warm and that helps in curing the disease right or we can say that helps in preventing uh, the spread of the disease right so in this way heat treatment is being used in various ways to prevent or reduce the inoculum so i hope that this has been clear to you now we move um, to understand that since um, I think this question must have arised in some of um, your minds that high temperature means that all the microorganisms will get killed. So um, will it not kill even the useful organisms present in the soil? So the answer to it is that excessive high and prolonged temperatures should be avoided so very long temperatures like for a long duration of time say for 7 hour, hours or 8 hours and very high temperatures that is 90, 100 or above it 
should be completely avoided because this destroys all the saprophytic microflora so this is uh, very much obvious that in the soil there are all kind of microorganisms present even the helpful ones like earthworms even um, there are many helpful bacteria also like nitrifying ammonifying bacteria so these all bacteria microflora they get destroyed these are called saprophytic because they live on uh, dead organic matter so all these saprophytic microflora get completely destroyed if you provide a long prolonged temperature and high temperature also uh, by increasing temperature the dryness of the soil increases which leads to the increase in the amount of certain salts for example manganese right so certain salts amount also increase then this will become difficult for the plant to grow again uh, there will be increase in heat resistant ammonifying bacteria and there will be decline of nitrifying bacteria so um, i suppose that you all must be knowing that nitrogen cycle is a very important cycle by which the nitrogen present in the atmosphere is fixed with the help of the bacteria present in the soil so um, ammonifying bacteria are those bacteria that um, help in uh, production of ammonia and the conversion of ammonia to nitrogen so the point to be noted is that these bacteria are heat resistant which means they can withstand higher temperature they will not die whereas nitrifying bacteria are not heat resistant which means that these bacteria that convert ammonia to nitrate will be decreased if the temperature is increased right so if the uh, decline of nitrifying bacteria will take place there will be uh, more amount of ammonia present because ammonia will not be converted to nitrate because nitrifying bacteria are absent and this can lead to accumulation of toxic levels of ammonia which will then harm the health of the plant and also the other organisms present in the soil hence um, <coughs> hence uh i said that um the temperature should not be too high or very prolonged temperature should not be given as this will destroy many type of saprophyte saprophytic useful microflora from the soil so um it is very important that the temperature is right and given for the right duration of time right so uh, this is it about heat treatment now we move towards the second type of um, physical method that is elimination of certain light wavelengths now uh, there are certain pathogenic fungi which sporulate only in uv range which is below 360 nanometer so for that first of all you need to know that the light that we see is visible light range which is from 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer so as you can see in this picture in this image that um this is the visible light which our human eye can see so the visible light wavelength is from 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer right whereas um uv range the ultraviolet range is from 100 to 400 nanometer which is below visible light so uv light is uv range is something which we cannot see right but these pathogenic fungi they sporulate that is they reproduce only in uv range so this kind of um, pathogenic fungi that sporulate only in uv range can be uh, reduced if this uv range of wavelength is removed from their area right so um, such pathogenic fungi for example alternaria solani right this is a fungal species which is responsible for early blight of potato right so this kind of um, 
yellowing of leaf and then browning of browning spots you can see and then later on the whole leaf becomes infected becomes brown and it falls off so this is early blight of potato so this is caused by alternaria solani and likewise botrytis cinerea is also a fungal pathogen which causes botrytis blight in strawberry right so um since this is caused by botrytis so hence it is named as botrytis blight in strawberry right so both of these pathogens for example are such pathogens that sporulate only in uv range that is they require uv light which is below 400 that is below 360 nanometer to sporulate to reproduce so that they can spread in other parts of the plant now for such kind of pathogens plant can be grown in greenhouses so we know that there are greenhouses where plant is being given various kind of facilities and uh, warm environment becomes available in greenhouse so plants can be grown in greenhouses where we can cover the greenhouse with special uv absorbing vinyl film so the greenhouse can be covered with special uv absorbing vinyl film this vinyl film will not allow the uv light to pass through and hence this will block the transmission of light wavelength below 390 nanometer so any light which is in the uv range will be completely blocked by such kind of a uh, special uv absorbing vinyl film which are available nowadays in the market and hence these pathogens can be stopped from uh, from sporulating by growing in such kind of special uv absorbing vinyl film greenhouse and hence such kind of pathogens can be um, reduced from spreading their inoculum can be reduced right so this is the elimination of certain light wavelength um, so wavelength here is a physical agent which is being used to reduce the uh, inoculum spread right so this is about elimination of certain light wavelengths now third type of um, physical method is drying of stored produce this could be grains or this could be fruits right so um decay of bacterial and fungal pathogens during storage can be controlled by this method now um, what we need to understand is that um, this method can be used for uh, plant produce that are being stored uh, like produce like grains and fruits that are already harvested from the plant and now it is uh, being kept in storage right so such storage um, the 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 storage part of the plant can also be destroyed because during storage also the pathogen can attack the uh, whatever grains and fruits are there and the the produce can get spoiled so um, any kind of bacteria or fungal plant pathogen that can decay the grains and fruits that is stored that are that are stored for further use can be controlled by this method so uh, most of the decay of legumes that are your pulses your your protein uh, produces all the grains like wheat rice and all and all the nuts etc your all the dry fruits can be completely controlled by the drying process right so these are all the materials like legumes grains and nuts can be controlled by this method now these material they carry with them a variety of pathogen even if they have been removed from the plant but these pathogen they carry with them a variety of pathogen which will flourish in presence of moisture so if there is moisture present or if there is even some amount of moisture that they will get then these pathogens present on these materials will ultimately flourish which means in the pr presence of moisture these pathogen will um, start spreading which will spoil all the 
storage products. <coughs> so this can be ignored by proper management. That is, by proper uh, properly mature organs are harvested. So if we harvest the properly matured organs at the right time and we allow it to dry in the air so for some time it has to be dried in the air in open until the moisture content gets reduced by 12 percent before storage so before you store these products the moisture content has to be get reduced by 12 percent so at percentage higher than this storage fungi becomes activated so if you uh, don't reduce the moisture content to at least 12 percent then uh, the storage fungi whatever pathogen present over the surfaces of this uh, of these grains or legumes they will become activated if the moisture content is higher so ha you have to reduce the moisture content by 12 percent by the drying process and then later on they are stored under proper ventilation conditions so um, in the field of agriculture after all the produce has been obtained there are facilities of cold storage there are facilities of uh, ventilation uh, rooms where the products are being stored in such kind of ventilation conditions where optimum moisture is present optimum temperature is there so the moisture is not very high and hence the pathogens will not spread right so um, if this step is followed then all of the kind of produce all of the kind of plant products can be uh, controlled uh, uh, can be uh, saved from pathogens by this method so all the kinds of fleshy fruits dried and slices all the sliced fruits can be saved from damage by this drying method so in the market you must have seen such type of dried products like this is amla right similarly you must have seen some kind of uh, dried fruits slices available in the market sometimes you you may have seen these in the malls right these are dried products of the fruit and likewise you must have also observed the fresh um, fresh fruits cut and diced and uh, sold like this in the market so all of this what do you think all of this have been saved by pathogen because they are being kept in such kind of conditions that is um, by uh, giving like there is a control over the amount of moisture in the environment in which they are present so these products that you see are dried in proper amount hence pathogen cannot attack them and these products that you see wherever they are present they are being given the optimum amount of temperature not uh, more uh, sorry optimum amount of moisture is given more moisture is not present hence even if they are fleshy they are being saved from the attack of the pathogen right so all of these all of the kind of fleshy fruits dried and all your sliced fruits can be saved from the damage if we manage the amount of moisture <coughs> present uh, in the plant product and this can be done by the process of drying in the sunlight and later on in ventilation conditions right so in this way the stored produce can be um, saved okay so the next type of method is refrigeration now <coughs> to be noted that this is the most effective and effective and widely used method of um, widely used physical method of saving the plant products from the pathogen right so this is mainly used to control many post harvest diseases of fleshy plant products now uh, see uh, you must be knowing that Uh, fleshy plant products are those products that have flesh present in them they have juicy content which means that they can whenever conditions become favorable for the pathogen they can be attacked even after uh, they have been removed from the plant right so we observe at our house also at our homes also right that um, there is a tomato present or there is a kind of 
uh, any kind of fruit present uh, if the pathogen get chance you will see kind of uh, fungal growth over the tomato right that is because anyhow the pathogen got chance to attack the plant product and hence uh, the plant got damage the product got damage right so this refrigeration method is mainly used to control many of the post harvest disease of fleshy plant products so fleshy plant products can be saved by the post harvest disease that is diseases that happen even after the plant the product has been removed from the plant right so the post harvest diseases can be managed by this method right so um this is the most effective and widely used method may it be at our homes or may may maybe uh, we talk about cold storage right at our homes also we have refrigerator where we put our vegetables right so what happens this is a kind of low temperature treatment which is been given to the plant right so um usually this is a low temperature treatment which is at or slightly above the freezing point that is uh, at 0 degree celsius or slightly above that is maybe 3 degree celsius 4 degree celsius that is called low temperature treatment right so what happens when we put our uh, produce our fleshy produce in the fridge this inhibits or retards the growth and activity of all pathogens right so what happens is that when the temperature is lower this will inhibit or reduce or uh, make the growth of all the pathogens slow obviously this will not kill the pathogen because um, at freezing point or little above the freezing point the pathogen will not get killed but it will become difficult for them to grow because lower temperature will retard their growth and uh, the their growth will become slow and hence they will not be able to spread over the post um, over the plant products so um, this is used mostly for perishable fruits and vegetables by perishable we mean fleshy fruits right like strawberry like um, papaya right these are perishable fruits because they are fleshy they can get uh, in contact with any pathogen any time and they can get decayed right so these are perishable fruits and hence this refrigeration process is often used for perishable fruits so uh, such kind of perishable fruits or fleshy plant products should be refrigerated as soon as possible after harvest so as soon as they have been removed from the plant as soon as they have been harvested they should be refrigerated and uh, then again after harvesting they should be should be transported in refrigerated vehicles so during transportation also refrigerated vehicles should be used for their transport so that damage does not take place and again they should be kept refrigerated until used by the consumer so wherever these fleshy products are been stored again they should be refrigerated until uh, they go into hands of the consumer so in all the processes may it be harvesting may it be transportation or may it be um, storage in all the steps these kind of fruits and vegetables should be refrigerated so when we are talking about refrigerator i just thought that this is important to tell you though you might also be already knowing but we also have refrigerator at our homes right we have a section called freezer and we have a section called refrigerator right so in the refrigerator usually the temperature is 1 to 3 degree celsius which is just um, above freezing point right it is not zero but it is 1 to 3 or 4 or 5 degree celsius right and in the freezer there is the temperature always less than 0 degree celsius that is 
it is in minus as you can see it has been written that in the freezer the temperature is less than minus 18 degree celsius which means that freezer is a much colder area and hence you cannot store your perishable products your fruits and vegetables in freezer because this is ultimate cold ultimate cold is also not good so you have to store your old uh, what we usually do at home we store our products inside this um, part right where the temperature is 1 to 3 or 4 degree celsius so um, what happens is by refrigeration we are lowering the temperature right so as the temperature gets lowered life becomes slow this life becomes slow for pathogen also and for plant products also so plant products also there is a reduction in the respiration process and hence uh, there will be reduction in sprouting there will be reduction in formation of uh, sprouts from the plant right at home we see that potato we keep um, in our house and sometimes sprouts come out right that is because it got um, favorable condition and respiration was good enough right but when you keep certain products some uh, all the plant products inside the refrigeration due refrigerator due to lower temperature the life becomes slow which means that this reduces the respiration process and hence this becomes difficult for anything to spread or grow so even the pathogens cannot spread they cannot grow and also the plant uh, they will not sprout they will not grow and hence this means that refrigeration increases the shelf life of the plant product so a uh, product that we keep outside the ref uh, outside the refrigerator will get decayed early whereas a product that we keep inside the refrigerator will remain for a longer time because it is difficult for the pathogen to grow there and also the plant their respiration process is also reduced which means they can also not grow at lower temperature so a very common example of this is this is just to make you understand that life at poles in polar regions right like arctic and antarctic they are ultimate cold regions right so the life is very difficult there human beings don't stay there much except for some researchers right and uh, um, even there are not much plants available in arctic and antarctic the plants are like almost next to impossible for them to grow because cold temperature does not allow anything to grow right so temperature um, is very much low at poles and therefore this leads to frosting so now this this frosting point I, I can relate with the freezer part why do we not keep our plant products like vegetables and fruits in the freezer because here the temperature is in minus 18 for example consider that your freezer is a pole is a polar region right which means if you keep your product inside the freezer that means the product will get frost ice crystals will be formed inside your produce so when you will take out that uh, fruit or vegetable out so out of the freezer what will happen um, as the temperature will increase the ice crystals they will start melting and what you will get is a very loose form of your fruit which will not be good for anything right so even frosting will lead to decaying of the product which is not good for um, the plant products and hence the freezer part is always given you only for um, um, ice formation and not for your plant product storage right so in this way refrigeration when done at slightly or above freezing point can help um, plant products to uh, remain fleshy and healthy 
right so refrigeration is being used on a large scale in cold storage available at various places in the country right coming to the last and next type of physical agent which is radiation right so um all the electromagnetic radiations like uv that is ultraviolet x rays gamma rays and particulate matter like alpha and beta particles are used in this process so these are the particles these are the radiation these are the um electromagnetic radiations we which we are um calling them as radiations right so again um let us come back to this figure where visible light is the uh light which our human eye can see likewise ultraviolet i had explained it is um from 100 to 400 nanometer and the radiations that we are talking about right now the gamma rays and x rays they are even below the ultraviolet which means they are from wavelength uh, 400 nanometer to 1 nanometer right so these radiations again these are very powerful energetic radiations so hence they have ability to control post harvest diseases of fruits and vegetables so uh, after harvesting also fruits and vegetables can have diseases and radiations can be used to control such post harvest diseases right so um this also helps in killing pathogen present on them um nowadays uh, radiations in radiations gamma rays are extensively used to control post harvest disease of peaches strawberries and tomatoes in fact in all the kind of radiation treatment gamma rays are the most widely used uh, radiations so uh, this is a list of uh, products that are being treated with radiation so for example beef and pork crustaceans like lobster and shrimp fresh vegetables and fruits lettuce and spinach all your poultry products all your sprouts right alpha alpha sprouts and all eggs and molluscans right oyster clams spices and seasoning all of this have been already treated by radiations and uh, this is being administered by food and drug administration fda right so um, there might be a question in our mind that will radiation not harm the plant products because when we say of radiation we mean that these are radiations that can lead to radioactivity and hence this can lead to damage of the plant products also so but the the point is that the fda food and drug administration has evaluated the safety of irradiated food for more than 30 years and has found the process to be safe so fda has said that irradiated food that is food that is treated with radiation is found to be safe so there is no point of worry now another thing to know is not every food that comes to your market is irradiated food so how do you know that the product that you are eating is a irradiated product or not <clears throat> so um this is the logo which says that your food has been treated with radiation logo so in this symbol in between there is a small simple plant right and there are dashed lines which show that this has been treated with radiation so this is the symbol present over any product which has been treated with radiation but we should always keep in mind that it is not a replacement to other methods there is no replacement uh, so because they uh, these products can still get contaminated so this is just a method of removing post harvest diseases from the surface of the plant product 
but this is not replacement to other methods that we have learned this is not a replacement for cultural method this is not a replacement for regulatory methods why because these methods um, these these products can still get uh, can uh, still get infected by various kinds of diseases after radiation treatment also these products can get contaminated so we should always follow all the regulatory procedures wherever possible all the cultural procedure procedures and radiation method is just a type of method which can be used but it is not a replacement uh in india it was only in 1994 that the government of india approved food irradiation so the food irradiation uh, method was approved in india only in 1994 but the foreign countries were using it long back ago now this is what i was telling so this kind of logo can be observed under um, uh, irradiated food treatment right so these are all products that are treated with irradiation the radiations which say that this this have killed all the harmful bacteria to make your food safer so there are two things which, which are very important um when we talk about the safety from irradiations so this is duration of radiation that is what is the amount of time what is the uh time duration that uh that the radiation is taking right what duration of time we are giving that radiation to the product and what is the amount of radiation like what is the quantity of radiation that is being given right so these two play a very important role in terms of safety so if duration is very long if quantity is very high then this would be harmful but if it is the standardized time or quantity that has been mentioned uh, by uh, standard procedures then this will not be harmful so in this way um, gamma rays is being uh, flashed over the plant product over the fruit or vegetable whatever it is and they kill whatever the pathogens that are present on the surface completely and whatever bacteria is present they get died and hence your post harvest product it remains free from pathogen right but as i said this is never a replacement so the point to understand is that there are multiple uses of this irradiate uh, of this radiation treatment this is during the quarantine so any fruit or vegetable that when reaches the quarantine quarantine process that is the process when uh, the fruit and vegetables are kept separate so that to know if there is any plant pathogen present or not so uh, during quarantine the fruits and vegetables can be given radiation treatment so that if at all any pathogen is present then it will be removed completely with the help of radiation and hence the quarantine time can be reduced next is pathogen reduction in many of the spices and fleshy foods again all the spices and fleshy foods they can be made pathogen free by the help of radiations this also helps in shelf life extension because once you kill the pathogen there is nothing to attack the uh, product like chickens meats fish these are more prone to uh, pathogens and hence their shelf life can be extended with the help of uh, radiation treatment then insect disinfestation can be done in various kinds of cereals pulses dry fruits and uh, in storage products like onion potato ginger garlic and all uh, we often see at our home they uh, sprout and this is not considered good when we want to sell it in the market right so to inhibit the sprout formation also um this radiation treatment is given and hence radiation helps in increasing the shelf life of products overall right 
but to be very precise this is not a replacement of any method that we have learned by now this is just a type of physical agent which is being used in uh, various um, for various purposes but this is not a replacement right this is not an alternative or replacement for anything this is just a method that is being used so um, I think that um, I have covered everything uh, in terms of physical agents um, with this we come to the end of the topic of physical methods I hope that uh, my explanation has been clear for all of you to understand this topic of uh, physical methods but um, in case if you have any doubt or anything that you want to ask you can mail me at my email id which will uh, which i will be putting up in uh, the district uh, description box right so in the description you can um, get my email id and email me your queries i'll uh, make you help whatever we i can right so thank you for your um, patient listening and as i said soon i'll be um, coming up with other methods that is biological method next time and we will continue with uh, this plant pathology lecture series thank you very much